So thank you very much for this nice introduction. I want to introduce you to Judy. Judy is a very active elderly lady who loves when her grandchildren visit her. Also, she, also she's very independent, so she likes to do her groceries on her own. And today she needs to go and buy apples, milk and sugar. So her task will be to remember those items while walking to the shelf to, um, in the shop. But when she enters the supermarket, she is confronted with the following situation. So it is very loud. There are announcement speakers, a lot of people, a lot of colors, products at various places. So this can be quite distracting for an elderly lady such as Judy is, right? Now, when she left the store, guess what she didn't buy? She forgot to buy apples, milk and sugar. Now, in this situation, Judy has to rely on her working memory. That is a cognitive function which shortly um, stores information such as groceries we need to get, maintains them while we are actively doing a task like walking to the right chef and also while processing all the information around us. As you can see, working memory is a very important cognitive function for a lot of daily life activities. And you now might think, for me, this situation is not so special. I sometimes also forget groceries when I leave the store. But for Judy, it is difficult because of two reasons. So first of all, she is a tiny bit older than we are. And indeed, it has been shown that working memory is amongst the first cognitive function that declines with age starting already at the age of 20, but with a much steeper decline at the age of 50. And although this, this uh, decline is natural, so it is normal, when we think about this 1 billion people that are older than 60 years in our society, and that this number is expected to increase rapidly in the next decade, the people that will experience such problem as Judy did, um, the number of those people is high. But unfortunately, Judy is not only experiencing this situation as difficult due to her decline in working memory, but also this distracting information around her makes it difficult for her to focus on buying the free items. And indeed, this ability to suppress distracting information from accessing the working memory is called distractor inhibition. And unfortunately for Judy, distractor inhibition is as well declined in elderly people. So, if distractor inhibition helps us to suppress all this information from accessing the working memory, which is focusing on buying the free items, if this function is declined, it can either lead to the fact that Judy would um, have a bias, so she would buy oranges instead of apples, but it can also lead to the forgetting of those items completely. Now, when we think about that we all will get older and eventually will be as old as Judy is, the big question is, what can we do about this natural decline? And the good news is, we can train working memory like a muscle. And the other good news is, I am developing such cognitive trainings to improve working memory. <laughs> so, <laughs> let me show you how I'm approaching this, this research. So first, I discovered some issues with already dis um, existing cognitive trainings. So most of them are not focusing on a clear theoretical model. That might sound a bit abstract, but when we think about developing a training, we need to be exactly sure what we are training. Second, most of these trainings assume that one approach works for everybody. But when we think about 2D training on a cognitive training, it does not necessarily also need to work for me, because I am a bit younger than 2D is. And last but not least, most of those approaches are not target looking at other mechanisms that could interact with working memory, such as distractors do in healthy elderly people. So in the training I developed, I tried to integrate all of those aspects so that we can help improve working memory for healthy elderly adults. And also we developed it for smartphone devices. So first, we took a theoretical model that looks at the visuospatial, verbal, but also coordinative and integrative function of working memory. For each of these functions, we looked for different tasks that assess them and then translated them into training tasks to make it a bit more fun. So we developed levels of difficulties, but also we included distractors in that training. Then we chose a few elderly people and tested this training with those people to see if they can use it. 
and good for us, they were able to use it. So we ended up with a smartphone application which we called SmartBrain and can now be downloaded in the app stores for the participation in our studies. Now, as much fun as developing this application was together with my team, it does not answer the question if we can improve working memory with it and also what mechanisms might play a role. So to do that, we have to run clinical trials. So we invited 120 lucky, healthy elderly adults to our study and we gave them um, the training to test. But to see if distractors might, might play a key role, we assigned them to different groups. So one group trained working memory with distractors, one without, and another used an approach that already <coughs> existed in the literature, and the last group did not train either on working memory or on distractor inhibition. Before the training, we invited everyone to our institute so that we um, could do a lot of tests on them, because we wanted to see how their working memory and cognitive abilities are before the training. Then we gave them the training. They trained 12 times for around over the period of three weeks. And we invited them again, and they had to undergo all these tests again. But like that, we could see if there is a change in those cognitive abilities and also the working memory. And I'm very sure that you want to know what we find out. So we found out that only the group that did the working memory training with the distractors showed improvement in working memory after the training. And interestingly, this group also showed an improvement in a function called visospatial learning, which is, for example, like, um, important for driving. So with that study, we were able to show that distractors play a key role in working memory training, in a sense that it has this beneficial effect of improving working memory. Practically, that would mean if Judy would have been one of our lucky participants, she would now be able to suppress all this distracting information around her better, so that her working memory can focus on buying milk, apple, and sugar, um, yeah, so that her working memory basically works better. But after running such studies, we always have more questions. And I am cu now curious to find out how working memory and distractors interact with, G with each other. Because at, the point, at this point, we are not sure if too much distraction might even hinder the working memory from being improved. So at, by looking at those mechanisms a bit more clearly, I aim to provide a targeted and optimal training for working memory that can be improved. Now, there are three things that make me very excited about my research and also the findings. So first of all, we discovered a way to improve a cognitive function with it, which is very important in daily life and experiences this natural decline in a large amount of people in our society. So that's very exciting. Second, um, the way our training is developed on a clear theoretical model, it allows to also, it has the possibility to help other people that experience problems with working memory. And indeed, it has been shown that working memory is amongst the first symptoms that declines, for example, in multiple sclerosis, but also mild cognitive impairment. And although we are not sure if this um, distractor also play a role in the training or improving working memory there, I'm very curious to find this out with my future projects. And last but not least, our training is developed for smartphone devices. So it means we can train wherever and whenever we want to. And I, in my work with the participants, but also in the clinics, I saw that almost everyone is using those devices, but evidence-based cognitive trainings are rarely available on such. So if we would now find out that, that those distractors and mechanisms can improve working memory also as a smartphone training, our app would harbor the possibility to limit this dissemination problem so that patients could download the training and use as their addition to a regular therapy. So to conclude, I want to ask all of you to thank your working memory for working properly every day, despite all those distracting situations you find yourself in. And if I now ask you to remember the things Trudy wanted to buy in the beginning and you're not immediately able to tell me, then you don't have to be worried about your already declining working memory, but you now know that there is very easy ways to improve working memory um, with training such as Trudy did. And personally, I hope that, that addressing our cognitive health, it will be as integrated in our daily life, such as going for a walk, or having a healthy meal so that we can maintain a great quality of life throughout our whole lifespan until we are that old and truly is. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.